And actually, we'd expect that because this this well maybe we wouldn't maybe we wouldn't expect it. Yeah, okay. I was actually going to say that the distribution is symmetrical. It's a little bit taller over this side than it is over this side. Uh, but only fifty five is 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 roughly between well, it is between forty and sixty. So that's where our measure of centre is. Okay, so that's the mean done. Right. And well, what about if we wanted to calculate, let's say, uh, the I'm actually just going to save this video as the calculation of the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. So say if we want to calculate the variance, well, you can see now from a formula perspective, maybe I'll just go over here again. Right. Let me actually go down to one that uses M's. To calculate the variance, uh, well, what we need is for the denominator, we need sigma F, which we have. We know that's 60. So we can take one away from that. So that's going to be 59. So we have the denominator. But what about the numerator? Well, it's M minus X bar. And we've just calculated X bar to be 55. So we could take 55 away from each midpoint. Then we could square it. okay, And then we could multiply that particular value, M minus X bar, the square of M minus X bar, we could multiply it by how many times it actually occurs uh, within the data set, which is represented by the frequency. So once again, we can calculate, we can calculate, we can calculate the variance. Yeah, really, it's, it's, it's straightforward now to calculate, calculate the variance. So what we need to do is we need to calculate, I suppose, uh, x minus, or not x, m, the midpoint, minus the mean, which is, which is, which is x bar. So I'll just say x b for x bar. Okay. Uh, and then what we need to do is we need to calculate the square of that. So it's it's m minus x b for x bar again times m minus x b. Okay, that will give us that will give us uh, the next set of values. And then finally, it's f times that. It's this value times this to give us. I'll just write the label in here. That's really what I'm trying to get across here. Yeah, let's let me just write the label. I'll move these over a bit. Right, they're sort of getting in my way here. Uh, so let me just put in here. Actually, maybe what I should do here is just say that this here is hat two to represent m minus x bar squared. Okay, and then we need f times it, so it's f times m minus x b uh, hat two, meaning it's squared also. Okay, and let me just maybe just put a, a table. Uh, a table border around that there. Okay, so let's do this. So the first value to win here is going to be m, the midpoint, which is 10, minus the mean x bar, okay, represented by x, b, m symbols, and the mean is 55. So what goes in here is equal to, it's equal to m, which is 10, minus 55. Which is represented by d12. Now I'm going to drag this down. So I want actually, I, I, I want, I don't want, I want absolute or an absolute reference to this 55. So that when I drag this cell down, this won't move and it'll remain stationary. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this particular the d value, the reference there, to dollar dollar, which keeps it keeps it fixed. It's an absolute reference. So now I have e3, which is 10 minus dollar d12, which is 55, which gives us a value of minus 45. And now I can drag this down. And you can see actually what happens in each case. In this case, you see that when I dragged it down one cell, uh, well, then that went down to the next position in the column E. But the D12 remained uh, reference uh, remained to reference uh, remained referencing this particular value here, okay? and so on and all the way down the column. But more importantly, what we've actually just calculated is we've calculated the distance that the midpoint is away from the mean value, okay? Now we need to square them. So this is equal to this value here, hat two, meaning it's equal to G3, the value in G3 squared, okay? Which gives us 2,025. Uh, 2, and once again, what we do is we just pull this down and that has applied that to, that has applied that to all of the columns, yeah. Okay, all of the all of all of the all of the rows. You can see that this value here is this value twenty five squared, okay, which gives a value of one two two five. And finally, we need f times these values. So this is going to be equal to f, which is here, star, well, m minus x bar squared, which is this value here. So once again, this is relative referencing. Uh, so that gives us ten thousand one hundred twenty five. And finally, what we'll do is we drag this down to the end. I'll just put an underline here. Okay? And effectively, what we have now in this column here okay, is we have for each midpoint, we've calculated its distance, its square distance from the mean value x bar, xb. Uh, and we scaled that up by f because this midpoint occurs five times.
This midpoint occurs 10 times and so on. But we don't want that. Okay? We want to calculate the variance, which is, let's see here, it's just a fraction. It's the sum of the f's times the m minus the x bar squared divided by the sum of the f's minus 1. So if we want to calculate the variance, well, we need the sum of this column here. So this is equal to the sum of this column here, right? which gives us 32,500. So the variance, right? We know the mean is 55. The variance in this case here, right? Let me actually just make them left aligned. Okay, the variance is equal to, well, 